Hi there Fiesta owners. Today in your 2019 Ford Fiesta, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Blue Ox's base plate. And this is what our base plate looks like when it's installed. You've got your attachment points here where your arms would slide in and out when you're ready to flat tow. These would simply slide in when you're ready and then your tow bar would attach to this. It'll work with any Blue Ox tow bar, but we do have adapters available here. If you've got a different manufacturer's tow bar, you can get that swapped over so that way it'll work with this base plate. If we head towards the center, we'll see our safety chain attachment hook right here. We're going to have these two components mirrored on the other side. And then here in the middle, we've got a mounting bracket for our electrical connections. You also receive mounting brackets for your breakaway switch. It's going to be behind there. You would install that and cut out your trim uh, once you've got your breakaway switch installed before you did it. Our customer doesn't have a braking system, so we didn't put one on there. Now, as far as the install goes with the Blue Ox base plate here, if you're doing this yourself, I would highly recommend you consider a Roadmaster base plate instead for your Fiesta. It's going to be a lot easier to install. These uh, Blue Ox base plates come with several handle nuts that you're going to have to feed into very small openings throughout your frame. There's going to be a lot of drilling and holes cut into your frame of your vehicle as well to get all that hardware in place. Roadmaster's got a little bit more of an elegant solution that's gonna save you some time when doing it at home. So I would choose this base plate if you like the way that it looks and you've got previous Blue Ox components you wanna use. But if you're starting fresh and you don't prefer the looks of this one over the Roadmaster, I would definitely recommend the Roadmaster over this one. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle with the hood open. There are fasteners that go across the top. There's a total of four and this is what they look like there. You'll notice there's a notch on each side of the fastener. You can take your flat bladed screwdriver or a trim panel tool, stick it in that notch. We're just going to give it a little bit of a twist. That's going to pop out the center of the fastener and then we can just pull the whole thing out from there. We're just going to do the same thing with the three remaining fasteners. We're now on the driver's side wheel well. I went ahead and turned the wheel all the way towards the right, towards the passenger side to give myself some more room to work. We'll have some fasteners here we'll need to remove. You'll have one there as well as here. We're going to use our T25 Torx socket to remove these. Once we get both of those out, we can kind of peel back on our fascia a bit. So we're gonna remove the fasteners that are located up in here. There's actually three of these fasteners that run up in here, but we're only gonna focus on the one here at the back for now. We'll have to remove our headlights at a later step and in the two further up are easier to remove once that headlight's out of the way. We'll take our eight millimeter socket to remove the fastener here at the back. After we get this fastener removed on this side, we're gonna go over to the other side. We'll turn our wheel the opposite direction. We're gonna remove the same fasteners that we did on this side over on that side. We're now underneath the vehicle. We've got five fasteners across the front we need to remove. Now you can see here our customers kissed a few things out there on the road. So some of those fasteners are missing, uh, like the one here in the middle and over here on the side, but there, are, there should be fasteners in those locations. You'll have two on each side and then one in the middle. Now we can remove those headlight assemblies. There's two fasteners on top, one here at the back and one towards the front. You can remove these using a T30 Torx, and you can see there's also a slit in it, so if you've got a large flat screwdriver, you should also be able to get those out. I prefer the Torx because it just works a little bit better with an impact gun. Once we've got those removed, we can start to take the assembly out. There are going to be some electrical connectors attached to it, so we're going to be gentle when taking this off. just gently kind of pulling up a little bit here in the back and then we're going towards the rear of the vehicle to get it to release here from the front. Here you can see our electrical connector in the center. We're just going to press on our release tab here and then we can just push this connector off of there. We'll now take our headlight assembly, we'll set it aside where it won't get damaged and remove the other side the same way. So now that we got our headlights out of the way, those two fasteners we talked about before that were going to be easier to get to, we can see one of them right there and then the other one's right down in there. This is the setup I'm going to use to get down in there. I've got an extension with a swivel head on the end. I highly recommend the ball socket swivels too. They work a lot better than the U-joint style ones. Uh, then we've got our eight millimeter socket there on the end. So we're just going to slide it down in there. 
and get that fastener removed. Now if you don't have an impact, uh, you can still do this with a wrench. I still highly recommend the extension with the swivel so you can have a lot more throw with your ratchet, but you could get a wrench down in there if you need to. It's just going to take a lot longer because you won't have much of a throw. And once we get these removed from this side, of course we're going to go over to the other side and remove those as well. After you remove the two Torx fasteners, you'll have one fastener down here that you're going to need a 7 millimeter socket to remove. So now that we've got all of our fasteners loose, we can slowly start to walk it away from the vehicle. You may need to pull outward just a little bit on your fascia to clear the fender liner. So now we're going to check for any electrical connectors that we've got it pulled back. We can see here we get our fog lights if those are equipped. So you can go ahead and disconnect those. And there's a couple ways you can do that. I think it's easier to just twist the bulb and take the whole bulb out. And we'll, we'll come back to that later because while you're holding the fascia in your hand, it can be difficult to disconnect those connectors. So that's why we're just gonna give a twist to those and just gently set those aside. Slowly move our way further, check for any other connectors. Looks like we don't have any more. So now we're just gonna take this and set it aside where it won't get damaged. So now just so these don't get damaged while we're putting our base plate on, I am going to press in on the release tab here and then pull this light out. And then I'm just going to push this back into the fascia and twist it back in. That'll keep those nice and safe. So now on our driver's side, we need to get our washer solution bottle out of the way. You'll have some electrical connectors here. Uh, these were already broken from the previous accident the customer had, but you'll want to pop those out of those holes there. And then follow this harness down here. You can see this is our connector for the motor for our washer sprayer. We're going to press in on the release tab here at the top and disconnect this as well. So now we've got, we're going to go ahead and get this washer bottle out of the way. We're kind of looking at it here because these hoses, uh, we're going to have to disconnect them or suspend this somehow. So we're just going to get it out of the way first and then we'll assess what the best option is going to be. We're going to use our 10 millimeter socket to remove the fastener at the top as well as the one down here at the bottom. We can then lift up slightly because there's a little peg right here that holds it into the frame. So we're going to kind of go up to get it off of that peg. And we may need to actually remove this electrical connector here depending on, uh, oh, no, we were able to get it to pop off of there. Okay. And now if we can slide it around this electrical connector. And I always like to not disconnect things if you have the opportunity to do so because the more time, times you disconnect things and reconnect them, you risk the chance of splitting hoses and busting connectors. So we're going to let it just rest right here. Uh, I'm probably going to take a bungee cord and wrap it around it to make sure that it stays that direction. So now that we've got our bungee cord on here, we know that's going to keep that out of the way for us. So we can go ahead and continue on. Next, we're going to remove the support brace that goes from here up to our latch. There's three screws, one here at the bottom. We're using our 10 millimeter socket for that. And then up here on the latch, we're going to have one on each side. We can now take the support brace and you have to pull it towards the front just a little bit to get it off those tabs. And then we're going to push the bottom inward a little bit to get it to clear here. And we should be able to pull it out the bottom there. Or slide it up the top. Looks like the top is going to be the easier way to remove it. Now this little push pin here also came out. That does kind of poke through the bracket, so you can just pop that back in. Next we'll need to trim out part of the shield here where it runs above the bumper beam. On the driver's side here, you're going to have your ambient temperature sensor. So we're going to cut just around that. And on the passenger side, we're going to cut very similarly, but we are going to cut up just a slight bit higher uh, on that side. But it's going to be very similar to this side. And we're just going to use some snips to cut this out. Just kind of bending it outward. You can also disconnect the sensor to get the wiring out of your way if you need to. And there's a little piece below it. We're going to trim this down as well.
And here on the other side, you can see it's similar. We're just cutting up just a little bit more. Next, we're gonna need to trim off part of our frame here on each side. I've gone ahead and marked out the area that we wanna cut off. You can cut this using a reciprocating blade going at it, or you could use a cutoff wheel. Uh, we're gonna be using a cutoff wheel, probably gonna be the easiest thing. We may have to switch to a smaller one here. Looks like this guy's probably gonna be a bit tight fitting it up in there, but let's see what we can make happen. We'll then do the same thing over on the other side. You just wanna pay attention over here. We've got some electrical wiring over here, so we wanna pop that off of there. And it's probably not a bad idea to temporarily disconnect the uh, horn there, just so you can pull this wiring a little bit further away. So that way you don't accidentally nick anything when we're cutting this. So now we're over on the passenger side. This is our bumper beam where it goes across. There's the frame. There's a elongated hole, a large hole, and a small hole. The small hole we're gonna use with our one and a quarter inch hole saw. And we're just gonna cut this out on top. Once we get this side done, we'll do the other side as well. So now we get this one cut out, we're just gonna move over there. There are a couple of wires over there, so you may wanna just temporarily disconnect those, kinda of like what we did with our horn here. And after we were done, I did plug that connector back into the horn. Now we can take any of those areas that we had just cut up. We're gonna take some clear coat and just spray it on there to protect any of these spots from corrosion. Next, we're gonna be putting our base plate into position, but the plastic fasteners located here uh, can potentially obstruct getting your base plate in place. So what you can do is you can actually just twist those sideways like that to get them out of the way. And then we can just drop our base plate into position. It's gonna straddle the frame, and then it's kinda just gonna roll down into position. So now that we've got it set in there, we need to get it leveled and also spaced appropriately. You want about a half inch gap here between the base plate and the back side of the bumper beam. We also want to make sure that we're resting right on top. We can see that that's sitting right on top of the bumper beam. I did take a piece of wood here and kind of propped it up so that way it holds it level so it's not cocked sideways forward or backward. And you would know that based on the gap being like a lot closer at the bottom than at the top, stuff like that. So we did the same thing over on the other side and then took some clamps to clamp it into that position. Once we've got it in position like that, we're ready to drill it out. We're gonna drill out the front hole first on each side, and then we'll secure it with those fasteners, and then we can move on to the back ones after it's secured. So now we're gonna take our 13 30 seconds drill bit, and we're gonna drill this out. A little bit of spray lubricant can help it cut a little easier. In your kit, you're gonna receive two size bolts. You'll have the longer and the shorter. The shorter are gonna be the frontmost bolts that you're gonna use first to attach the base plate. And these are gonna be all the remaining fasteners here to finish securing it to the frame. All of these are gonna get red Loctite, so make sure you've got some of that as well. We'll then take the shorter bolts with the lock washer on it. We're gonna slide it in through the hole and that's gonna thread into the handle nuts that come in our kit. We'll take our handle nut. You may have to get a little creative with uh, some bends on it to get it to properly line up with your bolts. Kind of did like an S shape there to help bring it closer to the, to the wall. That'll drop down in there. And then we're just lining this up with our bolt now. And then we're just gonna tighten this down. Now that I've got it started, you can go ahead and zip it in place. And we're just gonna run it down with the 916 socket. Now that we've got this one tightened down, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna drill that one out and then get it installed. Then we'll drill out both the holes on the back on each side. Now that we've got these holes drilled out, we can put our fasteners in, but we need to make sure we grab our plate and put that in place as well. We're gonna secure it to this side. I'm gonna go ahead and show you both the plates. This is the plate for your passenger side here. So it's got the two and it's 
kind of cut out to go around uh, components that may be here, depending on uh, the options that you've got. And then the driver's side bracket is this one here. It's got the three holes in it. So we'll just set that one over on the driver's side. The way we put them on is gonna be basically the same. Uh, it's just you got an additional hole on the other side and they're in a slightly different location. So we're just gonna slide this around just like that. We're gonna take our bolt, slide it through the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the other one as well just to help hold the bracket on there a little bit better. And then we're gonna do just like we did before. We'll bend our handle nut drop it down in there and secure it onto the fastener. It can be a little tricky to get these in place, so just take your time and get them threaded in there. So now that we've got our support plates installed, we're just gonna drill out the holes on our support plate right into the frame and attach it with the same hardware. It's gonna be the longer ones with the handle nuts fed down to those. So we're just gonna keep performing the same procedures we did up here. Back here, you'll have two on the passenger side. And since the brackets are side specific, the driver's side's gonna look a little bit different. It's gonna have one more hole, but it's gonna be basically the same procedures of drilling it out and securing it. I did find that these holes here were a little bit tighter too, likely due to the powder coating in there. So you may wanna take your drill bit and just clean up the inside there a little bit. Now with these handle nuts, it's not uncommon for these to be offset. They do seem to just cause a lot of problems. The nuts usually aren't welded onto the plates very well. Uh, and that causes your bolts to not be able to thread into them because they don't actually line up properly. So what you can do is you can take the bolt and we're running it backwards now from one way through and that can help clean up those threads. So that way when we're trying to feed this in in some crazy different situations we can easily get our bolt started and that's what we're really just checking here so there we go i can get it started by hand now it is still pretty stiff so i'm probably going to put this in the vise and run it through a few more times maybe back and forth to try to clean this up to make it a little uh, more reliable there's a lot of handle nuts that all got to go in the same hole they're very difficult to line up on these back ones here so it's really just a kind of a time game. Just take your time, go slow, be careful. If you get frustrated, I highly recommend just go take a break. Uh, the, just getting these handle nuts in alone, I've probably been working on just getting the handle nuts in now for about an hour and a half. So this is probably the hardest part of the whole job. We can now go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. Now getting your hardware and those handle nuts installed is by far the hardest part of this job. I'd say it took me probably a couple of hours to get the hardware fed in. Tightening and torquing it is definitely going to be a lot easier once you get it in there. But uh, just getting that hardware fed in, it can be really frustrating. So just giving you a heads up on that when you go to do this at home, definitely give yourself a little bit of time to take care of that. I would say this part of the install is about a third of the entire install. Now we can remove the excess handle nut that we've got on there. To do this, I found the easiest way is to take your snips, whether they're wire cutters or side cutters. We're gonna grab our handle nut with our snips and we're just gonna bend it back and forth and your snips should glide right on through it as you kind of bend it. You should feel like it easier and easier and then it just snaps right off. So we'll just do the same thing on all the remaining ones. Next, we're going to attach the permanent safety cables that come with your base plate. We're going to take the D-link, open it up, and we're just going to put it on the hook there for a moment. We'll then take our safety cable here, and we're going to feed it around the frame. But we want to make sure we avoid any hoses or electronics, anything like that. So we're going down on top there making sure we avoid this wiring. We don't want to pinch anything in between the frame and our cable. We can just go ahead and wrap that right around like that, and then I'll get that attached right around the frame for our components there. So we can then just take our ends, 
slide them onto the quick link. Sometimes uh, it's easier to maybe take your quick link off and flip it over just to get you the, whichever is the easier orientation for it, for you to get that threaded on there. Oftentimes what I like to do if I can is take and get the cables on the back side of it, kind of like this, and then get it to go through. And that'll just make it easier when you have to go to tighten this back down. And what you can do is you could take the excess cable if you wanted to and you could zip tie it here back further or anything like that just to keep the cables out of the way when you go to reinstall the fascia. It's not gonna hurt it in any way and if there was an event of a catastrophic disconnect and the cable did need to go into action, it would just break your zip ties and it would do what it needs to do. Now that we've got this one installed, we'll install the one on the other side the same way. We can now get our washer bottle back in place. Make sure we feed it back up the way we had removed it. Just being gentle when we're doing that. And you gotta get that little peg down in there again. That'll hold it in place. And then we can just put our fasteners back in. The only thing you need to really pay attention to here is the base plate here where our washer bottle is. See how the head of that bolt is touching on the washer bottle? We don't want that. So when I go to tighten down this lower fastener here, first it needs to come around here like that. And then we're just checking there, making sure that we've got a good gap. Looks like we could use a smidge more. So I'm just threading the screw in just a little bit. It's not all the way tight yet. I was just trying to get some teeth on it. And now we're going to pull this bottle as far away from that base plate as we can and now fully snug it down. We'll then just double check our gap. Just make sure there is a gap there. Looks like we have no touch in any location. And if you do, when you go to tighten down your upper bolt, you can also pull that one away some to help ensure you got a gap there. Now we can put our support bracket back into place and just re in, reattach it with the fasteners we had removed. And then we can mount our breakaway switch bracket. You'll have two that come in your kit. You can mount the short or the long, it's up to you. We're gonna mount the longer one. Our customer currently is not, does not have a breakaway system that he's installing, so we don't have anything to put on there. So we're just gonna put that one in place. We'll then snug that up with our 10 millimeter socket. Now when you go to tighten up top to ensure that our hood closes properly and it all lines up right, if we look around here, you can kind of see there's wear marks where the bolts used to be. We want to try to line this back up with those marks as best we can so that way our hood will shut and be in the same location that it was before we started. I was holding it in that position and then snugging it down. So now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna hold our fascia, just kind of holding it up into position so we can mark out the areas that we'll need to trim for our base plate to clear. So we just wanna kind of get in that rough spot there. Looks like we're pretty, pretty close right about here. So while you're holding it up here like this, We'll then need to mark out where our components are so we can cut out for those. So we can go ahead and see here's where our uh, safety cable is going to go. So we're going to go ahead and mark that there. We'll trim out this area here. We'll head over to the other side. Or we'll trim out over here as well. And then we also need to mark for our attachment point for the base plate there. That's probably okay up there. No, right, cut there, here, about like that. And we'll mark the other side as well. Additionally, I have some electrical connectors here in the middle. Now these ones I normally wait to mark because usually they'll pass through your grill. 
And then once you've got the grill on, if you need to trim out any for your electrical connector, you can do so at that time. So while we're holding it up here, we went ahead and marked it out. So we know what, kind of what we're wanting to take out. Gone ahead and marked it there. We really just need to cut out for our components. So we're just gonna take some snips now and just trim this out. Once you've got it cut out for your safety cable attachments, the fascia will slide on far enough that you can get fasteners in so you don't have to hold it anymore. And honestly, that's kind of the best way to do it because you can cut it out for these. And then we can get uh, most of the rest of our fasteners in to help put the fascia in its normal resting position. And then we'll be able to come back and get the most accurate cut at that point. So now that we've got a good majority of the fasteners in place to hold it, as close as we can get, we're hitting up on the base plate now right here. So kind of at this point, we need to make our trim, but now we know we've got it relatively in the position it's gonna stay at when it's installed. So if we look at it here, we can see we're gonna to have to actually do quite a bit of trimming because this part here is solid. So there's a good chance that this is gonna kind of tip down just a little bit when we get it installed. So we're gonna avoid trimming this for now we're gonna just try trimming up around this and see if we can get it in place. And then we're gonna trim the other side. We'll see if we can't rock our fascia in place, but if it won't, then we'll have to trim some of this out as well. So I've gone ahead and got the fascia all the way back on. You can see we did have to trim out just a little bit more there to clear in that area. I just used a very small reciprocating blade, but you could probably use a razor knife to cut that out as well. And then I took a file in there just to kind of clean that up a little bit. We did just get the fascia back on because our customer is just installing a base plate today. But if you were doing a full flat toe setup, I would highly recommend that before you reinstall your fascia and do all this here cutting out, that to put on your braking system and your diode wiring and all the rest of those components. Now he doesn't have those today, so we're just gonna be putting this back together for him. And now we've got all of our headlights and the rest of our fasteners installed. We go ahead and cleaned up any of the marks we'd made here on the front. And that will complete our installation. At this point, you're ready to hook up and install any other components that you may have. Again, our customer here doesn't have any, but if you were doing a full flat toe setup, I'd recommend diode wiring from Roadmaster. And I'd recommend a stay and play duo for your braking system if you've got a regular hydraulic braking system on your motorhome and I would recommend Demco's Air Force One if you have air brakes on your motorhome. And that completes our installation of Blue Ox's base plate on our 2019 Ford Fiesta.